Hi, my name is Alex, and in this episode of Magic Meso Minis, I'm going to be finishing off the Orc Tower project that I've been working on over the summer. So, in the last episode, we painted up this orc, as well as three of the Gretchen that are going to be on top of the orc tower that we had made in the videos before that one. And in those past videos, we made this orc Gretchen that is manning a Gatling gun turret, as well as this guy that is kind of sticking out of a little manhole that I'm going to attach somewhere on the main tower. And then, of course, here's the tower itself, with a bunch of these little guys on there, as well as, as you can see here, a couple guys hanging out of the window. And um, yeah, this project so far, I think, is looking really, really cool. And now all it needs is to be painted. Similarly to the orcs that we had painted in the last video, I attach the turret as well as a little manhole onto a piece of a sprue that I cut out. Then after priming them, I go in and start painting the Gretchens first. So in the last video, I had played around with different ways of painting these guys, trying to figure out what would be a good way to paint these guys in a fairly quick manner that would make sure these guys were interesting in their own right, at least to some degree, within the grand scheme of the larger project. And obviously, since I dedicated an entire video to going over my process in depth for how I decided to paint these guys, I'm just going to go over it quickly for this video. But if you're interested, you can check out the video in the card here or at the end of the video to see how I went about painting those guys and how I can compared that to how I would normally paint miniatures. But the basic gist of what I decided to do for the uh, orc skin was to paint on a dark green and then add a series of dry brushed highlights to create some depth. And then I would also go on with one or two layers of glazing over top of that to kind of get rid of some of the granular grainy effects that happen when you just dry brush a miniature. Also adding these brightest highlights with a glaze is helpful just so I have a little bit more control over where the brightest highlights are going to be coming from. But I go around all of the miniatures, adding this bright highlight with a loose idea of where I wanted a light source to be for this mini, creating my highlight color by adding a little bit of yellow to the green as opposed to a white, so that it doesn't lose any saturation. After that, I start painting all the other parts of the miniatures. So going over this guy's specifically this guy's shirt with a little bit of a light blue, and then to give that a little bit of depth, I go over that with a layer of black wash. I then go over this guy's pants with a basic brown color and just kind of have varying shades of earthy tones for the pants and loincloths and that kind of a thing for all of these guys. And then give those some depth by giving them a brown wash. Uh, as I mentioned in my last video on painting these guys, the washes do perfectly well for clothing as far as just a quick way to add a little bit of depth. And then to finish this guy off, I add a little dot of red into his eye. And fortunately, I didn't film how I did the mouths for these guys, but I do cover that in the last video that I had made. So you can just go watch that if you're curious. But then, as you can see me doing here, I start to paint the Gatling gun. And I was kind of using this as an excuse to test run some of the ideas of how I wanted to paint the entirety of the tower. I go over all the spiky bits with a dark red and paint the main part of the Gatling gun with a dark gray paint having that be the main secondary color for this um, project. I then painted the barrels of the Gatling gun in a layer of black paint. And then I dry brush a lighter color onto both the gray and the red. Although I think I need both of those colors to be a little bit darker so that the dry brush actually shows up more. But either way, I then start working on the metallics for this guy, adding primarily a gunmetal for the metallic parts and the kind of machinery, but also I add a brass colored to act as a secondary color for anything that is made of metal. Which you might remember, I also did this for the guys I painted in the last episode. I then go back to my gunmetal paint and add a little bit of weathering and paint chipping. And then to finish this guy off, I add a black wash over all of the metals and a brown wash over all of the brass metals. 
I can then move on to paint the rest of the miniature, painting over the little manhole as well as the tower itself with a slightly darker red and painting that on in two thinned out layers. I'm specifically painting a slightly darker red because the dry brush I had added before didn't show up super well, so I wanted to make sure that you could actually see that dry brush and the texture that that added to the miniature. And as you can see me doing here, I of course also add the dark gray that we added to the Gatling gun as well. I find that this helps break up the red without just adding a bunch of metallics all over the place. I also use this dark gray for the inside of the actual top of the tower, since it's not a detail that people will be focusing on. Adding the darker color forces it into the background and not to distract from the other minis that we're going to be placing on top here. To add a little bit more variation in all of the different metal plates that are going to be on the tower, I also decided to do some of them in a checkerboard pattern, since I always liked that part of the orc design. So I start by painting a layer of white over all the different places that are going to have the checkerboard. I find I need to do two or three layers of this paint to get a full coverage. But then I forgot I was getting a little bit ahead of myself, and I add a, the dry brush that I was mentioning I was going to add before, doing this fairly loosely and being sure to let it actually create texture on the flat parts as opposed to just being um, present around the edges of whatever I'm dry brushing. And then I of course clean up anywhere that it got where it shouldn't have. I can then go back to working on the checkerboard that we were doing. So I start by making a grid on all the places we want there to be checkerboard. And then once I've created a loose grid, I can start filling in half of the squares with black paint. It's important to make sure you add white first and then the black paint because adding white over top of black doesn't quite work as well. Since you can't get as much coverage with the white paint over the black than you can with the black over the white. And then I go in with a thick bit of paint to fix any mistakes and make the squares a little bit more perfect, but not worrying about making them too perfect since it is an orc vehicle after all. But then when I move on to do it again, I decided rather than paint the grid, I decided I would just draw it on with a micron pen, which worked a lot better for making the initial grid. And as long as I waited for it to dry before I added the paint on, it didn't smudge at all. And I found this to be a significantly better way of doing it since my squares were a lot more even to start off with, and when I went back to fix all the mistakes, there was a lot less to fix. Now with all that finished, I can start working on the metallics. I start by taking my gunmetal paint, I start by painting all the bits that need to be gunmetal, and I'm basically using this as a third color, I guess now it's more of a fourth color since we also added the checkerboard to break up the amount of red that's on the tower as well as just to make the whole thing look a little bit more scrappy and slapped together. I also make sure that I go around and paint all of the bolts and rivets that I had added in this metallic paint as well. And then I also go around to all of the metal parts of the miniatures that I hadn't quite painted, like these guys' swords and guns. Once all the metals are in place and tried, I go over them all with a black wash to darken them a little bit. Um, although I don't think in the future I'm going to do this because it also left a slightly weird texture to them that I wasn't so keen on. But going back to the miniatures, I also add the brass color that I was using as a secondary color on all of the weapons and metal parts of the minis before. Going over all of the brass areas with more of my brown wash. And unfortunately I forgot to film it, but you can see there that I also took my metal and I added a bunch of weathering and paint chipping with the metal paint. But I did as basically the same process for the metals, but rather than just using my base metallic paint, I took a silver paint and that kind of made it look like the metals had been scuffed and scraped. I also go around and add some rust effects to the rivets and bolts on this guy. And when I say rust effects, and when I say rust effects, it's mostly just slightly watered down orange and brown paint that I add around all of the rivets. It's not super complicated. But despite not being super complicated, it really helps sell the look for these guys. Beyond just the paint chipping, it's just an extra level of wear and tear that makes this thing look really authentic. And then the only thing I have to do after that is actually assemble the miniature. 
taking some more of the weld bond glue that I've used to attach everything before and stick that onto the turret as well as the little manhole and stick those guys into place. And then of course taking all of the other guys that I painted last video and putting them all around the top of the tower to make this thing look like a hustling bustling tower of orc nonsense. I am super, super happy with how this project turned out. As I mentioned in the previous videos, it was looking exactly like I wanted it to, and now that it's painted, it looks exactly like I wanted it to. It's super scrapped together and slapped together and wonderfully and absurdly orky. I think the only thing that I would change if I were to do it again is that it looks a little bit less like there was like a bunch of loose pieces of metal that were bolted together into a tower and more like they had a tower that they had to throw a couple like metal patches on. And I don't know that I like that as much as I could have, but it still looks really, really cool and I'm super happy with how it turned out. If you enjoyed that video, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell to get notified when I release new videos. All of that stuff is super helpful for making the channel grow. I'll try to be getting back to as many comments as I can, but I'm currently abroad, and if you want to know more information on what exactly I'm doing, uh, check out the update video that's on the homepage of my YouTube channel. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.